Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ 283 to 285. Therapy quote number 283, splitting of the image as a solution of the conflict between love and dependence on the one hand and hate on the other, reflects the dualism found in mythological stories. It rests on the fact that it is a very difficult situation for anyone to hate a person whom he also loves and on whom he is dependent. If only that person were two, he could vent both feelings. So there is the attempt to address the trauma of um, the split representations of other not being able to come together by the age of three to form a whole object representation of the other. So in a secure attachment style, temporarily the theory is the child creates two images of his uh, mother. One of her being loving and satisfying and rewarding. Uh, the baby looks in his or her mother's eyes and uh, he or she sees that the mother is loving the child and the child sees that's this so that's a positive experience all of the positive experiences the child experiences um, all of these memories which are inside of him they're internalized memories all of these condense coalesce to form some impression of her as being a loving person all of the times when she's not available a similar thing happens the child forms some impression of her as being uh, refusing or and whatnot and the feelings related to that uh, are split off from the person and disowned because the child can't hate whom he loves you see so the child splits the two as if they're two people uh, because the child needs to bond to the mother so he bonds with the positive memories and he rejects the negative memories they're a part of him they're split off and disassociated uh, now, in normal development, by the age of three, the two images come together to form a whole object representation of the mother. And that leads to the psychological birth, uh, that leads to Ubuntu, and the access to the real self, and the capacities of the real self. So there's mutual love and mutuality and uh, feeling connected to one's uni uniqueness and their individual wishes. And all the capacities of the real self are there um, at the psychological birth. Uh, sometimes the child has to form an insecure attachment style because the negative memories uh, may outweigh the positive memories and the splitting remains. The, the, the two parts didn't get a chance to come together to form a whole object representation of the other. So if that splitting is still there, um, that, that's considered a developmental trauma. So how do we talk about this or how do we face this or acknowledge this so one theory is uh, we we created we invented these fairy tales and mythological stories to reflect the inner world remember what the child said myths and fairy tales are true on the inside not on the outside these myth and these stories are just metaphors to describe what's going on on the inside so we they're personifications of the images we have so the rejecting side of the mother, the feelings about her, maybe there's an image of her as being a frightening creature. Because from the baby's point of view, the mother is quite large. So the image might be more scary and so on. And likewise, the image of the mother as being loving, uh, she would be like a, a goddess or whatnot. So there's that. So in the myth, you see the splits. You have these good gods and you have these frightening gods. And then that represents the inner ambivalence, the conflict between love and hate. Uh, so love and dependence is on one side and the frustration of the mother not being around on the other side. And because the latter outweighed the former, that split didn't get a chance to come together. So um, he says, he, he's, he asks a good question, you know, to acknowledge this, let's imagine the baby, it's almost as if the baby thinks there's two people until the age of three. Not really, but it's its sort of a, 
How does the child deal with the, the stress of the mother being loving sometimes and rejecting at other times? So the baby, the theory is, creates two images of the mother. And this gets corrected by the age of three. So the mother is one person, not two people. Um, so if there's a problem there and the rest of development uh, occurs before the, uh, if the, if the splits don't get a chance, if the split images don't get a chance to come together to form a whole object representation, um, then later on we can talk about this by considering our reactions to myths and fairy tales and looking at them as mirrors of the inner world. They're mirrors of the inner world. Just like before we said projection is a mirror defense. In projection a person doesn't know something about himself, he assigns it to someone else you know, and says that it belongs to that person. He's doing that so he can see what's inside of himself. That's the mirror defense. Same thing with this, these stories. We create these stories as mirrors to look within, to find out what's going on within ourselves. So we can relate to this idea of maybe there's some unresolved uh, trauma uh, between birth and three by looking at our emotional reactions to myths and fairy tales. And in the mythological tale, you know, there's a journey there to heal the splits and people become human beings in the end. Um, I'm not sure, but I think maybe myths represent from birth to 18 months, that's the primary process, there's more intensity there. And then maybe from 18 months to 36 months, maybe they're more about the fairy tales, I'm not sure, I'm just guessing on that. I'll, I'll follow up on that later. Again, splitting of the image as a solution of the conflict between love and dependence on the one hand and hate on the other reflects the dualism found in mythological stories. It rests on the fact that it is a very difficult situation for anyone to hate a person whom he also loves and on whom he is dependent. If only that person were two, he could vent both feelings. So maybe there's an attempt to the repetition compulsion. Maybe at least in his imagination he's trying to engage in the repetition compulsion to master the trauma. So in the myth he's venting both, he's venting his angry feelings. The baby cannot vent his angry feelings towards his mother. He can cry, but that's about it. But later on as a, in the myth he can... But it's, it's not meant to like literally... Um, it's not meant to, it's impossible to heal just through such a fantasy like that, but it's trying to acknowledge the inner world for the person to recognize that they're stuck with a severe ambivalence of love and, and frustration, love and hate, right? That's the original splitting. Um, so that's the theory on that. Yeah, so this adds to our previous quotes on the theory of uh, splitting. Remember, by the age of three, the defense mechanism of splitting is meant to be an existential hearsay. It's no longer needed by the age of three. By the age of three, the child has a whole impression of his mother as a human being, as a regular person. All right. uh, 284. Each person has in his mind something of a, quote, boogeyman, either the direct imago of a punishing parent or else a dream creature formed out of his guilt and his own repressed hostile feelings. I, it might be a bit of a mute point in the splitting uh, that doesn't get resolved, this rejecting side of the mother, uh, generally we would say that the metaphor for this is the frightening creature, the monster, the boogeyman, and all that. Some people say, yes, but it's infused with the child's hostility towards that image. So that's what makes it more frightening. And I think he's saying it's maybe just that. I'm not sure. So um, I think the general consensus is that the image of the... The, the part representation of the other that's rejecting and refusing. Um, that's, in fairy tales and myths, that's the scary witch and so on. Um, whether or not it's 
that image is there because of the child's hostility towards the image or not I, I don't see if it really matters that much personally but we'll follow up on that okay uh, 285 provocativeness expresses hostility with many clients the two great poles are hostility and dependence all else are derived from these so this again refers to the splitting, the unresolved splitting. You see many clients, because they're dysfunctional, they're caught in this ambivalence of needing love and then needing love from the mother, but hating the mother because she wasn't there, so they're, they're stuck with this psychic structure. But you know, this quote adds the idea of um, provocativeness expresses hostility. So before, we said Fairbairn included the idea that seductiveness is an expression of hostility because he splits the bad object, uh, the rejecting um, mother, into two parts, the refusing mother, the rejecting mother, and the enticing mother. And he says that the seductive mother, he said seduction leads to the rejection. It's an aspect of the rejecting mother because sometimes the mother promised to pick up, to promise to love the child and meet the child's needs and then she disappear or something. So there's the, that promise. Seduction just means like a promise to meet your needs. It just means in that general sense. And then uh, like a hope or something. And then the mother didn't, didn't meet that need. So that got split in the child's impression of his mother, of, his, of the rejecting side of his mother, that she's sometimes teasing, enticing. Yeah, he calls it enticing. Enticing. Um, and, and then she's rejecting as well, the refusing. So the bad object uh, okay, is split into the rejecting, the refusing part and the enticing part. And then from the enticing part, I think he came up with a quote, the seductive, somebody said that the seductive, no, not Fairbairn, someone else said that the seductive mother is the rejecting mother, stemming from referencing Fairbairn's theory. Right? So here, this one adds provocativeness is also an aspect of um, the rejecting mother. Right? So you can see with all these trolls, you know, they're, it, it's their hostility. But see, this hostility is because the needs for love didn't get met. When the baby didn't get the love from the mother, he's angry, but he splits it off. Now there's a developmental trauma in the repetition compulsion uh, in, the, in the therapy room, let's say, his expression of anger is the frustration of the love that he didn't get. So hostility and love are linked that way. The, the anger and the hate comes from not getting the love that he needed. Right? If he got the love, then he wouldn't be angry. Right? Uh, he'd be calm and, and centered and all that. And, uh, inner grace and poise and <laughs> balance and <laughs> equanimity and <laughs> all the capacities of the real self. Uh, would, would, would predominate the person, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, so these three quotes have added to our collection on the defense mechanism of splitting, which by the age of three should be existential hearsay. But for uh, you know, a num number of people uh, who, don't, who don't get an insecure attachment style, again, not blaming the mother, the mother may have had arrested development herself. She never got a secure attachment style. The mother may have had prenatal trauma, birth trauma, situational trauma, intergenerational trauma, trauma with siblings, trauma with other family members, trauma with the dentist, trauma while getting her tonsils out, school shock. So there could be, the parent could be, uh, is caught in her existential dilemma. You see, so she couldn't offer uh, the secure attachment. So I'm not trying to blame the mother, we're just trying to understand why a person doesn't get a secure attachment style. Because the mother didn't get it herself, and there's that intergenerational trauma, you know. Um, so uh, then that leads to dysfunctional behavior and repetition compulsion going awry and trying to master that early trauma. But remember Alice Miller said, nobody, nobody can travel back in time to babyhood to get that right. Uh, Wilson said it's, the moral revolution is to look within, to, um, to 
work towards forgiving the parents by understanding them. That brings up feelings of hurt. Reparation of the other leads to reparation of the self. That all leads to whole object relations. That's the, the journey, basically. And, um, yeah. and as we said before, splitting precludes mourning. And um, splitting precludes whole object relations. And with the splitting, you're seeing things in all X and all Y, like in the mythology. It's so, this God is so great and that God is so terrible. That's reflecting the baby's feelings. That reflects the split that the baby had to experience and didn't get, and which didn't get resolved by the age of three. And that's for petrified there, that's set there. Yeah. Okay, I'll just do a quick zip through. Splitting of the image as a solution of the conflict between love and dependence on the one hand and hate on the other reflects the dualism found in mythological stories. It rests on the fact that it is a very difficult situation for anyone to hate a person whom he also loves and on whom he is dependent. If only that person were two, he could vent both feelings. Which is what we see in the mythological stories, an expression of that, right? Each person has in his mind something of a, quote, boogeyman, either the direct imago of a punishing parent or else a dream creature formed out of his guilt and his own repressed hostile feelings. Oh, I see. Okay, now I think I understand it better now. He, he's saying it's a choice. This image of the frightening creature rejecting, uh, representing or personifying the rejecting aspect of the mother, it's either a direct image of that, um, the, that image of the boogeyman is either directly a representation of the refusing part of the mother, or it can be the child's hostility. Form, towards that image formed into a dream creature. So he's saying it could be either. I remember someone saying it could be blended. So it could be one or the other or a combination of the two. Yeah. And the third one was provocativeness expresses hostility. With many clients, the two great poles are hostility and dependence. All else are derived from these. So once again, Hostility and anger and all that, that's because the baby didn't get his needs for love met. And this becomes a trauma. And then later on, it's repetition compulsion. It gets acted out and like a broken record, trying to heal from that. And that's when we get into projective identification, externalization, displacement, acting out, and then trying to control our ability to deny our repressed feelings by controlling the image of that in the other person and then using rationalization to trick ourselves and to trick others and maybe coax others to play that role so that we can continuously repress the image. But see, all that is the repetition compulsion gone awry. The idea is that every man is my mirror, every fairy tale, every mythological story is my mirror. It's all to look within, to work towards assimilating both feelings, uh, because when we assimilate both sides, the ambivalence, when we assimilate it, we reach whole object relations. That's the healing journey, basically. That's the theory of object relations theory. And, uh, and the psychological birth at the age of three, when the splits come together. Right? So more on splitting in the future. This adds to our growing collection on the defense mechanism of splitting. And um, hopefully by the end of the series, this concept will become even more clear as we go along as well. So I'll just leave it here. So thank you very much. This has been TQ 283 to 285. Thank you. Bye for now.